It's been a while. But I've been hard at work trying to figure out the core gameplay to the game that I'm designing. And I'm at one of those points where I'm trying to solve a specific problem that is holding me back from achieving that full feeling in my game that I'm aiming for. However, I'm excited to say that the game is taking shape. In this video, I'd like to show you a good old fashioned design update for the game that I'm working on, codenamed Wander. I'd also like to discuss a fun problem I have in front of me in order to get my game to its full potential. Maybe you can help. Let's start with an update and that'll help you understand where I'm at. If you've been following my channel for some time here, you know that I'm designing a hex tile exploration game. It's a game basically about going into the mountains or forests in an effort to get away and find some fun challenges out in the wilderness. The game functions mainly by players building the map that they're going to explore on. The way you move about is by connecting the tiles and trying to match up the terrains on each of the specific tiles. You can actually connect the terrains, so if you have multiple tiles connecting together with the forest terrain, then your player can actually move from anywhere throughout that forest terrain. Same thing with mountains, same thing with deserts, same thing with plains. The game is mainly about building resiliency and gathering a lot of good stories from your journey in the wilderness. Hopefully through the game, as players are traveling throughout the board, exploring new hex tiles and interacting with the places there, they can see a story unfolding in front of them. Let me talk a little bit more specifically about the mechanisms. My game uses hex tiles, cards, dice, um, tokens, a weather track, and a player mat. And here's how they actually work. When players start the game, they choose two out of three goals to focus on throughout the game. This is how the player gets to personalize their play style and winning objectives. Players may want to focus on sightseeing out in the wild. They may try to find as many moments of adventure and challenge, or they may want to meet some really cool people along the way. Players will have an opportunity to reset these personal goals in the game, but each time they choose to reset a goal, it discounts the value of their original goals when they started their trip. You've already heard me explain the basics of moving throughout the terrain earlier, but there's more to do on a player's turn than just revealing a tile and moving throughout the terrains. Exploring in the game means to use a player's movement to move off the edge of one hex tile in order to reveal and explore the next adjacent tile. The term explore always means to reveal a new tile and move on to it. However, a player's movement count determines the actual distance they can cover on a single turn. It determines if they can move through just one terrain on a turn, two terrains, or even three terrains. Players can definitely add more movement to their turns, but it requires them to focus on exploring one terrain type at a time. On a player mat, there's these little marker tokens that a player can leave on the board anytime they pass through or land on a single terrain type. If the player is able to place all three markers out on the board on separate terrains of the same type and then return to a campsite, then they can reset their marker tokens and move their little compass tokens to give them more movement for future turns. You see how that fits the theme? Eh? Huh? Thematic. As players explore throughout the board, I want them to feel like they have a lot of choice in what they do. If we imagine there is a hidden system of hiking trails that connect all the terrains together, then we can also imagine that there is opportunity to always wander off the trails and have a little adventure. On a player's turn, no matter what terrain they are in, they can either stay on trail, which means draw cards, or they can wander, which means roll the wander dice to find out what happens. The further a player's current terrain stretches across the separate hex tiles, the more trail cards they can draw or the more wander dice they can roll. For example, if a player is in a small patch of desert that is secluded to only one hex tile, then the player can only roll one wander dice or draw one trail card. If a player is in a large range of mountains that stretch across three or more hex tiles, then the player can draw the max amount of trail cards on a turn, three. Or they can roll the max amount of wander dice, three. Depending on the size of the terrain a player is currently occupying, they can draw between one and three trail cards, or roll between one and three wander dice. Here's where the core gameplay exists, so listen up. 
The two mechanics of drawing trail cards and rolling the wander dice are connected, but they require a bit of conscious decision in order to know which one to do, because players cannot do both on a single turn. Remember, players can either draw trail cards by staying on the trail, or they can go off trail and roll the wander dice. On some faces of the wander dice, there are straightforward actions. The dice that I have are just regular dice, so just imagine that they have symbols on them. If a player rolls the wander dice and they roll an item icon, then they get an item. If they roll a story icon, then they gain one story token. If they roll too many lost symbols and they cannot overcome it, then they're lost for that turn and they can't perform any other actions. However, some die faces like the eye, which is for sightseeing, or the adventure icon can be used when a player has a card to play that matches that icon. Let's say a player drew an animal sighting card on their last turn, and that card requires them to roll two sightseeing icons in a matching terrain type. That player can't cash in the benefit of that card until they roll two sightseeing icons. Same thing for adventure cards. They may be required to roll two adventure icons from the wander dice in order to have a chance to attempt the adventure card and gain the benefit. Now one cool thing is players always have the option to roll the wander dice. They can always go off trail without any cards in their hand and just decide to roll the dice for some fun outcomes. However, the more trail cards a player has in their hand gives them a greater chance in scoring more benefits and potentially points at the end of the game. There's the balance. Yes, it's always fun to wander off trail on a turn in order to roll the wonder dice, but it pays to stay on the trails long enough to collect some valuable trail cards in order for those wonder dice to pay off. You see? Okay, moving on. I'm still figuring out the best system of using cards in my game. After studying games like Root, I really found it so interesting that those cards in the game that you're drawing have enough icons and suits on them for you to have very interesting plays on a turn. So as you collect the cards, no matter what faction that you're playing as, there's always an interesting way to combine the cards together to create an interesting turn and play against the other players, or to score points for yourself. By playing Root, I learned how satisfying it is to combine your cards together to have a really satisfying, complex turn. Yes, players will always draw cards randomly from the adventure deck, which reflects the randomness of adventure, but it requires the players to be smart in how and when they play their cards. Some of the cards that are drawn are played immediately, as if the player has a passing opportunity to either jump at the chance of adventure or pass it up to manage their time well. But most cards drawn go straight into the player's hand, awaiting the right moment to be played. So that's at least the core gameplay so far. There are other ideas floating around in my head, like a weather track, which allows you to play certain suits of cards and gain the benefit, which is noted by the weather icons on each of the cards. If you discard cards that match the current weather icon, then maybe you're able to reset your goals for that turn. Also, the weather track progresses by anyone playing the nighttime cards. So anytime someone lands on a campsite location, if they have a nighttime card in their hand, then they can play it. That nighttime card allows them to roll a dice that benefits all players on the the board, but it also progresses the weather track one more day. And maybe there's some possible gameplay in the way players are trying to progress the weather track to get them to a certain weather type and play their cards right. I also have a very messy idea about using items in the game. So some of these cards you might see, they tell you to trade stories for an item. That's just a thematic uh, mechanic that I'm trying to work out. I don't even know exactly how the items will be used in the game so far, but if I'm trying to flesh out the game to the point where people are actually finding and trading items in the game, then maybe those can benefit accomplishing those adventure goals or the adventure cards or allow them to help certain people in the game or overcome specific challenges. Items are cool, but they become a little messy and they're also a little cliche, so if I can't find a mechanic that really uses them in a clever new way in my game, I may not use them. So yeah, there's some other ideas for mechanics, but I'll have to keep messing around with them. As I'm jumping into the current state of the game right now, I want you to know that the game is still far from being finished. 
As you've seen, I'm still in the middle of the design and prototype stages of my game, and it has been an uphill battle to even get to this point and see small marks of progress. Now the game is filling out in a way that really makes me pleased with the progress so far. However, I would be lying if I said that it was easy to even get the game to this point. It has been so hard to get the game to a functional state that it is right now, where the game feels less about strings of mechanics that I perform one after the other, and it starts feeling like more of a game. I think it's important to point out the lows in this design process. Getting a game from the original idea to a full developed game is not always a steady climb. For me, I, I can't always invent the perfect game mechanic on the spot or mastermind a design solution to get the game past an obstacle. That often takes time, research, and several playtests. Sometimes you just gotta wait for a light bulb moment to hit you on its own. We're only human and our brains need both stimulation and rest. All that to say, my game's not even finished and it's been a hard road trudging to this point. And I want you to hear that because I bet there's lots of people out there experiencing the same hard fought journeys in their own game design. But you know what? The fun part is, these are just games. We should have fun designing them. So let's jump back in. New day. I'm not sure about your experience with board games, but I have researched and played several exploration and adventure games, or games that make the landmarks or locations that you can visit in the game feel immersive, distinct, and fun to interact with. Games like this include The Classic Talisman, Seventh Continent, and Robinson Crusoe. Since my game is also an exploration game where players are adventuring throughout a board, I'm wanting to take note from these games on how they accomplish an immersive gameplay as players are moving throughout the board, landing on locations, and having things to do at those locations. Outside of exploration games, I've also been playing games like Parks and Root, mostly to get a feel for the flow of mechanics, but especially for Root to figure out how to use cards well. But here is my game design problem. I'm still unsure on how to make adventuring and exploration functions in a game feel fun and rewarding. I know I'm still in the prototype stages of my game. Obviously, I'm still there. But my game is still missing that oomph, that little spice on top that really makes it worthwhile as you're adventuring throughout the game. I'm kind of at the point where my game works, but it's, it's a little dull in its delivery. On some turns, I'm actually left thinking, that's it? And honestly, that's a little hard to admit. In my previous videos, I've warned new designers from thinking that creating an open board of spaces to explore and land on is enough to create an immersive sense to the game. There needs to be stuff to do at each of those locations in order for players to feel like there's an engaging interactions in your game. If all you can do in an exploration game is land on a space and nothing happens, and you don't have a game there. What's the point? Now, so far in my game, I figured out how to give players something to do at each individual hex tile they can explore onto. Players have a lot of choice in where they explore throughout the board, and each individual hex tile has at least two to maybe four locations they can land on and visit. A few of the games that I mentioned before, like Talisman, Robinson Crusoe, and Seventh Continent, all have some sort of element and game mechanism where you're landing on a space and you're drawing a card to see what happens. This mechanic of drawing cards from an adventure deck seems to be very rudimentary at first, especially compared to the innovative and newer mechanics that we see in modern board games. I mean, we were drawing cards in the Monopoly days. So how can drawing cards fit within the modern industry of tabletop games? How do I innovate on this very basic mechanic of drawing cards and making the specific spaces in my game feel unique and interesting. Yes, I'll be using the same card drawing mechanic that a history of board games have had so far. But what is gonna make my game feel special and help deliver the feeling that I want my players to leave the game with? I don't, I don't know. So hopefully you get my problem. Will my cards and dice combo really do the trick or will I need to go back to the drawing board with my game? We'll see. Now don't worry, 
Cards are still dope. And I think they could be part of the solution in how I create a clever, immersive gameplay experience for my players. I mean, the highest rated board game of all time, Gloomhaven, has cards in it. So why can't mine? If I didn't try to use mechanics just because they have been used before, my creativity would be crushed. Especially as a new board game designer, I sort of rely on the mechanics that I've seen before. And part of the fun of game design is turning known mechanics into new mechanics. Think about all those games out there that have a mechanic or component that you've seen before that is very familiar, but they use it in a very clever and unique way. I bet that impressed you, didn't it? If those designers can figure that out, we can too. So what do you think? I've been waiting a month to ask you that <laughs> after I'm finally posting this video. In closing, post your ideas below on how I can address my specific design problem of creating an immersive, interesting and unique gameplay experience in my exploration game, Wander. Also keep posting your design ideas for the games that you're working on right now. More and more of you are showing up. It's incredibly encouraging to hear your thoughts on my videos and also your insight to the design ideas that I'm working through. So thanks so much. Oh yeah, I've uh, I've started a Patreon. If you'd like to support me in these videos outside of just subscribing through YouTube, I'd love to have you along. That is all. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.